y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I am burning up. I must be having a hot flash. It's like I'm just sweating. And uh, I don't know why. But anyway, hello. It is Friday night late. Um, and it's time for Bible study. I'm just late because I cooked late tonight because we have a get together. My phone is dead. Chris's phone is dead. So I had to run and get the old um, iPad mini thing. And so I don't know how good the quality will be, but we'll see. I'm sure the sound won't be as good for sure, but uh, we'll make it happen, won't we? I think, I don't even know what the date is. I think it's the 23rd. And... Okay. Can y'all tell me, is it the 23rd? It's telling me to enter some passwords. I'm going to say not now. <laughs> um, I think it's the 23rd. That's what we're going to read. Okay? It says, August the 23rd, setting your imagination. The mindset on the spirit is life and peace. And this is coming out of Romans chapter 8. We all know Romans is a really good part of the Bible. Um... Of course, the Bible's good all over the place, but I just really like Romans because it encourages us in our salvation and it tells us the plan of salvation. Um, so it's a it's a wonderful book. And Francis Bobo says it is the 23rd. Thank you, Francis. Um, I am a late bird tonight, so the early birds are probably in the bed. And so y'all are getting to see me tonight and they'll just have to watch it in the morning. Um, this is coming out of Romans 8, 6. And it says, Our imaginations are a blessing from God. Unfortunately, because of humanity's fallen nature, they're susceptible to being corrupt by sin. We visualize what we want and imagine what we lust after. And then, when the Lord does not give us what our minds construct, we become frustrated and even angry with him. But the truth is, there's no legitimate place in our minds for ideas or fantasies that are contrary to his truth and will. To entertain such thoughts for even a moment is to set our minds on the flesh and therefore pursue sin. I understand this is spiritual warfare, and it is its most fundamental level. At its at its most fundamental level, the enemy influences you through what you think. And that comes out of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. So I guess we could flip over there and read it right quick before we finish. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. So let's read that right quick and then we'll finish it up. I'm not finished. I just, I mean finishing reading that little part of it. Okay, it says 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. You can tell it's late because I'm a little slow tonight, ain't I? Alright, this says spiritual warfare and it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So it's telling us it's the spiritual warfare. Okay? So when any deceitful, lustful, flesh-centered thought pops into your head, the best thing you can do is recognize it for what it is. Call it a lie, refuse to think about it, and reset your mind on what is true, and do it immediately. To win the battle here makes all the difference. So do not focus on sinful fantasies. Set your mind on the Spirit and dedicate your imagination to bringing praise to His name. I will say... Pastor preached Sunday a good message, and then after we talked, you know, we've talked this week about Hebrews, and uh, I call it Hebrews, and I know it's Hebrew, but 
that's just in my head since I was a little girl and it's just not going to leave my head. And I think God probably don't mind me calling it Hebrews because that's what I've always called it. But anyway, we've been reading in Hebrew. I said Hebrew. And um, we've been talking about Christ being our high priest. And pastor preached Sunday the coolest sermon um, about the power in Christ and the power in our salvation and the power that we have through the Holy Spirit. And it's really an unimaginable power. If we wanted to, what he's saying, set our imagination on something, we could set our imagination on that power because it is out of this world power. Power that's, he called it, the, the words that were used in the scriptures was the same meaning as dynamite. It's that energetic. It was talking about how um, energetic and p how much power we have through the Holy Spirit and how much power Christ has uh, to save us. You know, um, and after us reading this week about Jesus being our high priest and then me going in Wednesday night and hearing that, um, it was just exciting. And I know that Thursday morning when I got up, well, actually when I laid down Thursday, I didn't see y'all yesterday, but when I laid down for my nap, it was so funny because I laid down. I always lay down in the dark. I always turn on the fan, and I get real relaxed. And I was sitting up kind of in my bed, you know, like leaned up against pillows, and I had my arms crossed, and I started thinking about the power in the Holy Spirit and how much power it has. And anyway, it was just wonderful to meditate on. And it, it just made... If you just sit around and meditate on those kinds of things, I'm sure that God doesn't mind um, that type of an imagination. And that's kind of what he's saying here in the scripture. So it was just ex an exciting day for me. I thought, you know what? Um, we lay around and we think about the goofiest, you know, not just goofy things, but we worry and we fret and we want things and we're not happy and we're not content. And... Um, but if we were to set our minds on those types of things, um, I believe we would be a lot more content. Not only would we be content, but we may even get a little excited about telling somebody about Christ. Get a little excited about being um, born again and having a place in heaven uh, to go to one day. It's very exciting, actually. And um, I hope that we all are excited about it. And I hope that we tell somebody about it or tell somebody, you know, how we got saved or tell somebody about Christ and him being the high priest and how we all have um, hope in tomorrow and that we have hope even if there's not a tomorrow. It's very exciting. Um, so much more so than things of the world and things that are here that we like to um, wrap ourselves around, right? So anyway, I am going to read a little bit more in Hebrew. It is Hebrews. Lord of mercy, it is Hebrews. Y'all can tell how much of a scholar I am. I knew I had always called it Hebrews, and then I think I've heard it referenced as Hebrew, and so it's just kind of confusing to me. Anyway, I always call it Hebrews, so I've been right since I was a little girl. Um, we're going to read in Hebrews chapter 8, because we read some in 7, we read some in 9. We're going to read some in 8 tonight, just for fun. Um, I am going to... I'm going to read this part, because it's exciting, talking about this power that our Jesus has and about him being on the throne right now, um, being an intercessor for us. So let's start it out with 
chapter 8, verse 1, and it says, Now, this is the main point of the things we are saying. So what he's telling us is, from what all we've read already, this is the main point. So listen to this, because this is important. It's the main point. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected, and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also having something to offer. For if he, for if he were on earth, he would not be a priest. Since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is also the mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. So he's letting us know that this is a better co covenant, a better promise, a new covenant. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. Wow, is that a mouthful or what? Unbelievable. God is saying a lot right here and he's letting us know that He's making a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that he made with their fathers in the day when he took them out of Egypt. And he gave them the covenant. And he also says that he's going to put his laws in our mind and write them on our heart, and he's going to be our God, and they shall be my people. Isn't that exciting? And none of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother say, you know the Lord, for they're all going to know me, he said. Now that's something. From the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. In that, he says, a new covenant. He has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old? Now, what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. So, and then, then he, he tells about the, early, the earthly sanctuary like we read the other night and um, Christ being seated in the heavens and being our mediator, okay? So, um, it's just beautiful. Now, once you start in chapter 10, we'll do chapter 10 the next time we come together. Because he's going to talk about animal sacrifices are insufficient. Um, and Christ's death fulfills God's will. Um, and to hold fast your confession. 
the just shall live by faith. And so that's what we're going to talk about the next time we get together. So if you want to read Hebrew chapter 10, that would be great. But we are learning about the old priests in the Old Testament, how Christ became the new um, high priest, how he is the mediator between us and God now, and we no longer need the old tabernacle built by man. We actually have a new covenant, and God t tells us this in chapter 8, and Christ fulfills that covenant. And we'll talk about that more the next time we get together. I'm not sure. Um, probably be Monday, more than likely, because we have a... Um, we'll be at, at Chris's mom's tomorrow up in Menton. Not her house, but we're going to be at her uh, family reunion tomorrow. And she was along, L-O-N-G, and they're from Alabama. And so we get together in Alabama up at Menton, kind of, so it's... It's a place where everybody can drive to pretty, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. And so we'll be eating lots of food. I've got to decide what to cook. I've got tons of ground beef. So I'm probably going to do like a beef pot pie or, I mean, a meatloaf always goes well with a bunch of sides. And I may make a vegetable or two tomorrow. So anyway, uh, we don't have to get there till 1 o'clock. So I've got all morning that I can make something too. I hope y'all have enjoyed tonight's lesson. I hope that you set your imaginations on Christ, the Holy Spirit, salvation, leading others to Christ. Um, I will say I have found out something really sad. I don't know why I didn't follow the Spirit of God like I should have. But there was a lady that used to watch my cooking show. And she watched it faithfully in the beginnings when I started in 2017. Her name was Kimberly Simpson. She was from South Georgia. She actually sent me five pounds of pecans one time. Um, she had a son that had cancer, and he actually died. And not after her son died, I just didn't hear much from her anymore. And for some reason, the last, ever since really the show started, so it was been, it's been since May that I've been thinking, you know, I need to contact her. Tell her about the show. I never did, y'all. I never contacted her. And it just kept weighing on my heart. So the other night, after Bible study, I went in there. I mean, the other day. Yeah, after Bible study, the other night. I went in there and looked her up. And do you know that she passed away on June the 25th? I felt so bad. It said that it was a sudden illness. So... I know that, uh, well, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure she was a believer in Christ. So all I can say is if she could hear me now, or if Jesus could be my mediator for me, maybe he can, to tell her I said hello, and I'm sorry I didn't follow the Holy Spirit and call her, or send her a message through Messenger, and that I'm glad she's up there with Jesus. Um... And it just goes to show, y'all, I actually had another classmate pass away this week. And it just goes to show, I mean, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. None of us know if we're going to be here tomorrow. Something can happen. He was 50, we're 50 years old. And so I'm not sure what happened to him either because it didn't say. But um, I just had found out about him, and then I found out about Kimberly. It really did make me feel bad that I didn't contact her. But anyway, um, y'all should keep that in mind. For those that are around you, not to just put off today uh, because you have tomorrow, because we don't always know if we got tomorrow. So on that note, let's praise the Lord and be excited that there is hope. That we do have a hope and we really never die when we're born again. Because we're born again. So we do not have to face death. Christ conquered that when he died on the cross and rose again. So we can be thankful for those that hope. And let's share it, y'all. And let's not 
hoard it and, and keep it locked up and not be ashamed of it. We really need to be telling people more than we do. I included. So, um, just let people know that God blesses you. And then maybe if you're contagious, they'll want to know why you're so happy or wh what you have that's different. Let's not be like a lot of the Christians um, today and get bogged down with the um, ordinary things of the world in our life that keeps us from shining our light and having the joy that we should have in Christ. If we truly had our imaginations set on heaven, we would be contagious, y'all. So let's think about that. Um, try to take at least five or ten minutes a day to do nothing but lay down and close your eyes and meditate on the Lord. Okay? Let's say our prayers. It's good to see y'all on a Friday night. I hope y'all have a blessed weekend. I love you all. And let's say our prayers and we will end the show. Okay? Dear Heavenly Father, I shouldn't say show because it's not a show. It's real. Okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you so much for this high priest, Jesus Christ, um, that does give us hope. We thank you for putting aside that old covenant and making a promise and a new covenant so that we as Gentiles, not your chosen people, um, would live in the age of grace that we're in and be able to be children of God and have um, the privilege of being a part of the church, which is what Jesus Christ died for. May we get on fire for the church and those that are around us, may we minister to people, um, whether it be in deed or by prayer or by cards or whatever it is that we could do to minister to other people, I pray that you would help us be mindful of that. Forgive us for our many sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good night. I'll see y'all Monday. Love ya.